Hi there, David Benichek here, your authenticity coach. Uh, this video blog is entitled uh, The Power of Commitment. I just posted a blog on LinkedIn, a Pulse, and I'll post it on my website, authenticity.com. Uh, and uh, the blog is about the power of commitment in work teams and in corporate culture. And I, I say it's a missing ingredient for many teams, but I hope you work to live. Um, and so at the bottom of the blog, I, I said, I, you know, I, while I was writing the blog, I was looking at these roses that are next to me. And these roses are actually a Mother's Day gift from our two daughters to uh, their, their wonderful mother and their great mom. Um, but it, it just reminded me of a personal story that I think really kind of gets to the core of what commitment is all about why it benefits us. Uh, so can I share it with you? Um, the story is actually about 72 red roses and one white. Uh, it relates to um, our family and the ability to have family. Donna and I have been married for, we're going to be married for 14 years in August. Uh, we have these two wonderful girls, but my personal journey to get to the point of having family um, hasn't been easy. Um, when we got married, Donna and I decided we would wait a couple years before we tried to have kids. Uh, and fortunately, we were blessed. It wasn't too long after we started trying to have children that we found out that we were pregnant. Uh, and it was an awesome moment, and it just builds on uh, that stage of marriage, and we were pumped about what was to come. And one month went by, two months went by, three months went by, uh, and uh, we told everyone uh, about the upcoming pregnancy, and everyone was excited, and life was great, until shortly after the three-month mark, uh, Donna miscarried. It was a Saturday. We were shooting a wedding. Don is a wedding photographer, and photography is my side passion. Uh, and so I was helping her with it. And uh, she woke up with some slight cramps that didn't seem all too bad in the morning. But as the day went on, uh, they got worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Long story short, actually in the hotel of the reception, uh, they were awesome to give her a room as she wasn't feeling well and the ambulance was coming. Um, uh, she miscarried. Um, that child and you know what as as we were trying to deal with that and and I, I remember them taking her down in the gurney towards the ambulance um, And I was cleaning up a little bit in the room and, and going to close the door. I remember with no one else around I slammed that door uh, And I remember uh, looking around and I, I was taking the keys because I was going to drive the car behind the ambulance And I just whipped it against the wall um, I was angry I was angry at God. I was angry at life uh, not because I'm entitled, but this wasn't the first time um, when, uh, for those of you that know who I am and or have read my story in my book, Author Anticity, A Pathway to Purpose, you know uh, Donna is my second wife. I was married to a beautiful girl in spirit and human being, uh, Nina from Singapore, uh, for many, many years. Uh, in our attempts to have family, we had an atopic pregnancy uh, that after we dealt with um, Nina shortly thereafter, um, had an aneurysm in the brain and passed away at a very young age. And so this want for family and this constant dashing of that hope um, had gotten to me that day with Donna. And I didn't show it in front of her. I tried to be supportive, uh, but I was pissed off inside. Uh, can I say this to you? Commitment comes from one of two places. It either comes from uh, potential, where we just get excited about something in our, that's in our life and we say we want it and we establish it as a goal and we create a plan to help us get there. But for many of us, it can come from our pain. I mean, and sometimes we're afraid to commit because we've been, our hopes have been dashed in the past um, and uh, we've been there, done that, and the hurt was too bad and we're not going to do that again. Um, but I'm creating this video blog to encourage you uh, that commitment is worth it for a couple of reasons, not because it can guarantee a result, but because it brings us to a place where we're okay and we know that we're on our way. Uh, so here's the story of the roses. Uh, for the first couple weeks after uh, that miscarriage, um, you know what, I, I, I tried to be supportive, but I was stuffing my own anger inside. I'm sure she saw it. And it was unspoken, that white elephant in the room. Um, and the anger was not directed at her at all. It was just directed at life. Things that we don't control. Uh, commitment means to me that you do what you're going to do despite what you think and what you feel. That you put a stake in the ground in the future that you know what you want and you have a stubbornness that says despite the hurts, despite the disappointments, that is still a hope that I'm going to strive for in my life. Um, and you create an environment where there are regular and tangible reminders that you're on your way there. 
Not that you can guarantee the result. Can I, as I tell you this story, can I say this? We were fortunate to have Mia and Kiera. Um, what I did did not guarantee us having a child. There would be circumstances where I did what I did and we wouldn't have a child and I would still tell you it was worth it. But here's what I did a couple weeks after the miscarriage is I, I put a stake in the ground and I, I finally, I, I had had enough with the emotions and keeping them inside. I went to Costco and I bought 72 red roses and I bought one white rose and I brought them home for Donna. And I took her upstairs. We have a bonus room that's a sitting room that sits on top of our garage uh, and looks out in the mountains and it's beautiful. And I finally broke down and I cried and I presented this to us and we hugged and she cried. Um, and we talked about the pain. Um, but I said, uh, here's the scoop. Uh, the white rose symbolizes that we will have a family and we will continue to strive for a family and we'll move past the hurt and the disappointment. Uh, and and we're gonna try for family. And this, the 72 red roses, are an expression of my love, but they're just a start. Uh, here was my commitment to Donna that day, is that I would give her a rose a day until we had a kid. Or we grew old <laughs> and didn't have children, um, but grew in our love for each other and, and passed away. Either way, you're getting a rose a day from me. And my frugal wife, um, on a light aside, looked at me and said, I hope you're buying them at Costco because that sounds really expensive and I don't want you spending a lot of money. And so we laughed for a little bit. And sure enough, uh, I didn't buy a rose a day. I would buy a dozen. We would mark off a dozen days in the calendar, but it represented a rose in, uh, a day. Um, a time after, we got pregnant and we had Mia. And the feeling when Mia was born, given the history and the journey, uh, was simply incredible. And she holds a very special place in my heart uh, because of that journey. But here's how 72 roses that are red and one white rose relate to commitment in our lives. Um, commitment has a number of benefits. I, I said before, it, it says that we're okay and we're on our way. Um, it puts something to play for back in our life, even if it's against hurt and disappointment and everything that you feel like just running away and just giving up on the dream. It says that I'm going to be stubborn and recognize there are things that I don't control and I'm going to have the audacity to dream it anyways. Life without hope is uh, not very motivating. It's not very productive. Um, but it also helps us feel okay every day as, as we put regular and tangible results that remind us that we're on our way. Now, a rose a day does not in any way indicate increased fertility or likelihood of having a kid, but it was a constant reminder that we're on this journey uh, and we're doing it together and we're still committed towards it. And it was actually a huge motivating factor in our ability to get past the hurt and disappointment and move towards something that was better uh, in our lives. Um, and the last thing about commitment when we dare do it is that it builds a relationship. Irregardless of whether we had me or Kiera, Donna and I relationship grew when in the face of adversity and through a communicated commitment to something better, it drew us close together. It drew us together. Commitment in our lives should involve other people. It means that you go out and here are the, the steps to committing. Uh, you go out and you, you say you involve someone and you say, here's what I'm shooting for. And here's what I commit to doing on a regular basis that I want you to hold me accountable to. So that I too can be in an environment with no guaranteed results where at least I know that I'm okay and I'm on my way. You know, the, the blog that I wrote on LinkedIn is about commitment in the corporate sense, but it is huge in your personal life. Today I'm asking you, what do you commit to? Whether it's you're fed up with being fed up and you're finally going to put a stake in the ground and involve someone else and have regular tangible um, markers of results that benefit you irregardless of the result or it's something you're just pumped about. Commitment is not just a missing ingredient for success in our corporate world. It is a key ingredient for fulfillment in living a life uh, that you deserve. Feel free to share your story. You can email it to david at authenticity.com um, or contact me at 403-874-1044. Um, but I wish you all the best.